I suppose you're all wondering why I called you here today. Um, Shivas are Batamas, and I feel like um, it's actually a very special Shivas are Um, You know, we're all going through a lot of stuff, everybody in their little life, and their little world, which is a big world, and the world in general, it's not just here in Israel, it's uh, everywhere in the world. Uh, people are walking around afraid. Uh, confused. Um, it's a time that um, the Jewish people in particular have not experienced for many, many years. And uh, I'd just like to speak about Shiva Sarbatamas and put it in that context um, and share a couple of um, inyanim which I believe are chidushim. Shiva Sarbatamas, the uh, Chazal say, quoting Zechariah in Paraches, that there is a Tzayim HaRavi, Tzayim HaChamishi, Tzayim HaShavi, Tzayim HaAsiri, four major Tzaymois fast days that the Navi spoke about. Um, Tainus Hester is not in there because that was after the time of Zechariah. But there's four major fast days that the Navi spoke about in Zechariah Ches, Pasuk Yotes, um, today is the Tzayim Haravi, and it's called the Tzayim Haravi because of Nisan, Iyar, Sivan, Tammuz. Um, here we are in the Ravi, Chodesh Haravi. And Chazal say what happened on the Tzayim Haravi that the Navi spoke about. Some happened and some didn't yet happen, apparently. So Chazal says that Shivasar Batamuz, Yoim Shinishtabru Haluchais. Moshe Rabbeinu broke the luchos. Butel HaTomid, the Korban Tomid stopped. Hufga, ear, the walls of Jerusalem were breached. Saraf HaPostamas HaTayra, the Torah was burned in public. Vehemid Tselem Behechel, and the Greeks put a Tselem, put an idol into the Beis HaMikdash. These are the, um, the the reasons for our fasting today on Shiva Um All of these have a lot to um, talk about. Um, I'm going to speak about two of them. The first one, possibly the most, the original Shiva Batamas, if you will, was the Shvir Saluchas. And it means to say that Moshe Rabbeinu went up on Har Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights, he didn't come back in the estimation of the people on the bottom of the hill, the Jewish people, millions of people. Um, he didn't come back on time. The people started worshiping the Egel, Hazohav, of Adazara, and Moshe Rabbeinu um, heard about it first from Hashem, and then came down the mountain, and it was Shivas or Batamuz, make the Cheshbon from Shavuos, and he broke the Luchas broke the luchas. It's important to note, if you haven't already, that if the Jewish people would not have broken the rules and worshipped the Egel Hazav, they wouldn't have gone back to Avodah Zarah. So Moshe Rabbeinu, instead of coming down with broken luchas, he would have come down with complete luchas. Shiva Batamuz is the day that Moshe Rabbeinu would have come down the mountain with the Luchais Rishonais, with the first set of Luchais, and we would have seen something spectacular, miraculous, unbelievable. We would have seen Luchais that are nearest Mishnei Rehem, that you could see from this side or that side. Miraculously, we would have seen the pieces of the Luchais Benes Hayuaimdim. It would have been miracles, but more important, as Chazal say, than having been able to see the miracles, if Moshe Rabbeinu would have not broken the Luchos, um, so the whole nature of Yiddishkeit would have been different. Um, there would have not have been, in the Lashon of the Chazal, there would not have been any Shikha Satir. Um We would have immediately gone into Eretz Yisrael with Moshe Rabbeinu in a couple of weeks, 
Yala, you know, here's the Luchos, let's make, wait, let's make the Aron Kodesh, let's go into Eretz Yisrael. Um, we would have been right there by Tisha B'Av. Shiva Sirbatam was by Tisha B'Av. We would have been in Eretz Yisrael. And of course, instead, we know that's not what happened. Uh, Luchos, the, the, the Luchos were broken, the, the Maraglim, so Eretz Yisrael. But I just want to note and commemorate the fact that yes, Shiva Sirbatamos is the day of Shiva Shivir Saluchais, which was the day of major disappointment for the Jewish people. Major change in the derech of Kla Yisrael and who we are and what we are. But it was also our lucky day in a way, because um Shvir Saluchais what could have been Nasina Saluchais, it was a day that was dedicated in Shemayim for Nasina Satyra. So the morning Shvuz <laughs> would have been the day. Shivasa Batamas would have been the day that we would commemorate that we received the Torah in its miraculous form from Shemayim. And we need to keep that in mind, not only to understand the disappointment of the uh, Shviras Haluchais, because, whoa, we messed up big time. We should have had the Nasina Haluchais. But I think it's a, a actually much deeper than that. The Navi continues to say, Koyamar Hashem Tzvakais, Tzoyim HaRavi, V'tzoyim HaChamishi, V'tzoyim HaShavi, V'tzoyim HaAsiri, Yilaves Yehuda. They will still be for the Jewish people. That's today. L'sasayinu L'simcha, L'moyadim Tayavim, it'll become a yantiv, V'emes V'ashalim Ehavu. These, these days, these four Four days, and we're of course focused on Shiva Sirbatamus, will become, said the, the Navi, a Yantiv. Okay, Yantiv. I mean, must speak that <laughs> that there's um will be finished with the chet, let's say, of Shvira Zaluchis when Mashiach comes. We'll be finished with the chet of the eagle. But what's the Yantiv exactly? Tishabav also becomes a Yantiv. When Mashiach comes. Those of us that said slichas this morning know that every one of the slichas, the special slichas, the very moving slichas of Shiva Sibetamos ends with the same sentence that it should all be turned into a yuntiv. It should all be turned into sasain and simcha, to mayadim toivim, va'emes va'shalom ahavu. That's all part of the slichas. It's all intrinsic in the slichas that we say. So what is the um, yontiv? And um, I want to um, point out to you that um, shvira saluchis, shvira saluchis, the breaking of the luchis. It was a day. The Mekubalim say this. It was a day of shvira. It was a breaking day, a day of breaking. You know, when Mashiach comes, the Navi says, morning has broken. Behufka <laughs> chadash. The, the breakings of the day were the, of course, the Shviras Haluchais, as we just spoke, but also the Shviras Chaimais Yerushalayim. The breaking of the walls of Yerushalayim. Two things broke. The Luchais broke, the walls of Jerusalem broke. Two tragedies two different shaviros that took place on the day. By the way, um, you can un feel free to unmute yourself for a second. When did this, uh, we know when the Shvir Saluchais happened, but when did the, the Hufka Ha'ir happen? When did, who, who broke the walls of Yerushalayim? So, you know, uh, you know, we learned in Cheder that, um, well, on Shabbos or Batamos, I was right, the Rebbe Galant and Cheder, on Shabbos or Batamos, the walls were broken, on Tisha B'Av, the day Semikdash was destroyed. It's not Emes. <laughs> the, um, first of all, there was a two and a half year siege on Yerushalayim, um, and the siege started on Asar Batavis, not on Shabbos or Batamos. Um, there's a machlekes the Bavli in the Yerushalmi whether Shivas or Batamos of the Hufka Choymois, whether the walls were broken, was it during the time of the Bayis Rishon, or is it in the time of the Bayis Sheni? Same machlekes and Tainus the Talmud Yerushabavli in Yerushalmi 
is the other calamity that took place, which was Butla Tamid, that the carbon Tamid stopped. When was that? So Yeshaimrim by Yisrishain, Yeshaimrim by Yesheni, and a third opinion is twice. When were the walls broken? Shivasar Batamuz, Yeshaimrim by Yisrishain, which would have been the Babylonians, Yeshaimrim by Yesheni. But when in the Bayashani, the Romans destroyed the Beis Hamikdash. But when, when do we? We don't find in the in the timeline, to my knowledge, in the timeline of uh, Tisha B'av of the Chorban Beis Hamikdash, Shivaser Batamas, We don't find this matzav of breaking the walls of Yerushalayim as a uh, as a milestone event. Um, so, um, who broke the walls of Yerushalayim exactly? And the answer, La uh, Daiti. Um, is not uh, what we learned in Cheder's kids, but the answer is Yevanim Nikbitzu Alai, Ufartzu Chaimos Chaimos Migdalai. The Yevanim, the Greeks, came, and they broke through the walls of Yerushalayim. Ufartzu Chaimos Migdalai, Vetimu Kol Hashmonim. It's a Hanukkah story. Yevanim Nikbitzu Alai. The only thing was Hanukkah was when we had the Ness. Of the Shemen, but the Fartsu Chaimais Migdalai was the Yevanim was in the time of the Greeks, and that, according to many Rishonim, was the Shivaser Batamas that we're talking about of Hufka Ir, which, may I note historically, was approximately 200 years before the Tishabav of the Harbin Beis Amikdash. So um, it's interesting that whoever it was, but let's say it was the Yevanim because I'm right. Um, Whoever it was that broke the walls and it happened to fall out on Shivasar Batamus, it fell out, obviously not accidentally, on the day of the breaking of the Luchais. And it also fell out, it fell on the day of the what should have been the Nasina Satira of, of giving the Luchais. Like that's where it starts. It all starts with Moshe Rabbeinu coming down from the mountain, supposed to give the Luchas, and said he broke the Luchas. So that's when the, the Yavanim came, Ufartsu Chaimais Migdalai, Vitim Ukalashmanim. Not sure why we dance when we say that, by the way. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a sad, it's a sad story. But maybe there's a reason. Um, so I'd like to explain the following. That start with the breaking of the walls, and we'll work ourselves back to the Luchos. And this is very important and I believe very deep. Um, why did the Yavanim break the walls of the Beis Hamikdash? Better question. Look in the Mishnah and Tamid when the Hashmanayim took over um, um, the Beis Hamikdash once again, in the Malchus Hashmanay, they didn't rebuild those walls. Isn't that interesting? That should have been the first thing they did, was rebuild the, the base. Mikdash was still there. Yavanim didn't destroy the base of Mikdash. They destroyed the walls. So we should rebuild the walls. So the Mishnah says that, no, we didn't rebuild the walls. Why? Because what did the Yavanim want? The Yavanim, their, their, their purpose was, like things that we've experienced even in our times, their purpose wasn't to destroy, their purpose was to build. I'm not giving any great Olam uh, Haba to the Yavanim here, but I'm just explaining historically what it was. Historically, the Greeks, the Assyrian Greeks, um, were great philosophers. Um, this was The Assyrian Greeks were not the ones necessarily that were worshipping, that was earlier, worshipping Zeus and worshipping all the, um, they, they were just relics of the past. The, the, the Greeks were the people of the culture. The Greeks were, taught us about, the legal system, the parliamentary system, the Greeks taught the world about sports, the Olympics, the Greeks taught the world about philosophy. Uh, the Greeks were Yafta Lakim Liefes. Yafta Lakim Liefes. No, Hashem said to Noach, Yafta Lakim Liefes, Noach's bracha, was that there's Yofi, all of architecture, all the beautiful architecture that we have today, most of it is said with the Greeks. So it's the mathematics are said with the Greeks. And the Greeks obviously couldn't stand us historically that the Jews were not like Maccabal, we were like living in this ghetto. And, you know, we're not getting with the times. You know, the world has to become a Olam Achid. 
There has to be an achdus in the world. And there shall be war no more. And the mission of the Greeks was almost a messianic mission from their point of view. Maybe they were atheists, but it was almost a messianic vision of creating a dea achas, b'chola aretz, of uniting the world as one. And therefore, their mission was not to destroy the Beis HaMikdash. Have your Beis HaMikdash. Their mission was hufka ha'ir. Let's get down the walls. Because the walls of the of your and by the way, of Fartsu Chaimois Migdalai is your Shalayim. Taking down the walls of your Shalayim meant Shivyon Schuyot. <laughs> like our knowledge will come to you. You'll understand the things that we understand in terms of the, the uh the, the way the world should work, the way the politics of the world should work, the way the culture of the world should work, the chachmas of the world, everything that comes from the, the Yavanim. The Gemara has all kinds of uh, conversations the Tanoim had with the Yavanim, and they, you know, there were hair splitting details. Where's the Shemayim? Where's the Yaretz? Debates that took place between the Yavanim and the Jews. But what they wanted is Fertzu Chaymais Migdalai. Let's get those walls down. Now, it's important to understand this. What was the Tikkun for taking, what will be the Tikkun when Mashiach comes? For the Fartsu Chaimais Migdalai for taking down the world's years. What do we do the minute Mashiach comes? Do we build? Okay, let's rebuild the walls. You see in the Bayashani, they didn't rebuild the walls. So what are, what are we meant to do? Do we rebuild those walls, not let anybody in again? So let me say to you that Yeshayahu, Perk Nun Vav, said the following Nivua that when the Mashiach comes and when the Geula comes, Praza is Teshev Yerushalayim. Yerushalayim will be without a wall at all. Meiroi v'adam u'behema b'seicha. Nobody will be locked in. Nobody will be locked out. V'ani e'yela, ani e'yela nu'um Hashem choymas e'savi v'lechavayt e'yeh b'seicha. We will be surrounded by fire and Hashem will be inside. And he further said, Ishayahu, that it'll come a time of Kibesi based tefillah, Yikare Lachol Ha'amim, that the Beis Amikdash will be the center of all religions. Everybody, Jew, Gentile, Greek, American, will come to Yerushalayim, Kibesi based tefillah, and they'll understand Hashem Achadush Mayachad. And they'll come and they'll worship to Hashem in Yerushalayim. Kibesi beis tefila yikare lechol ha'amim, lechol ha'amim. All nations will be welcome to worship the Holy One in the Holy City in the Holy Place. For that we can't have walls. For that the walls have to be permanently removed. We've got to finish the job of the Greeks, and that's why in the Bayesheni they didn't put those walls back up. As a machoikus and tanoim, some said they put some up, others they kept open. But the the avoda, or let's put it this way, the hishapchus, the turnaround, davar v'yifuchai. You would think of shivaser betamuz is to rebuild the walls of Yerushalayim, and I dwell on this because that's today. No, the 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 tachlus of Yerushalayim is to use the opening, which the Greeks made. And do it from the do it from for kedushas Hashem. Uh, let, let me say something to you. that if God, if God forbid somebody breaks into our house, Loyalena, and breaks through the door, ufartsu chaymois migdalai, they broke in. You call the police. Okay, that means that wall is not supposed to be broken down. Okay, but let's say we open the door. <laughs> Click, open the door, take a breath of fresh air, get your mail. So nobody's calling the police. That's, thank God, we're able to open the door. We're able to go outside. What's the difference? One is somebody breaking from going from the outside to the inside, and one's coming from the inside to the outside. Yeah? So it means to say that the Greeks were coming from the outside to the inside. They were breaking the wall, but they were going in the wrong direction. 
What happens when Mashiach comes? Prozai's Tesha of Yerushalayim. That the walls come down, open, will sit Jerusalem. And the or of the Beis HaMikdash will go out. Instead of the wall being broken from the outside to the inside, which is a pirza, a partsu chaymois migdalai. No. You know, everybody knows that the, that the, um, the windows of the Beis HaMikdash were not uh, um, like fort or fortification windows where it's wide on the inside. You stick your rifle through the little piece over there. We've all visited a fort. We're all from Chutzlarts. <laughs> you, you stick your, they have a little hole where they can't shoot in and I can shoot out. No. The way the chaloinos of, of Yerushalayim are, are designed is that it's thin on the inside and wide on the outside so our or can go out. And it means to say that the tikkun of Shivasar Batamus of the breaking of the walls is to break them further. Davar v'hifuchai. And the breaking of the walls, for that we say, thank you very much. Yashukayach, you broke the walls, you had the wrong idea, but it came out good. That's one bulldozer we don't need. The Greeks already broke the walls. The, the um, you know, it means to say, you know, just if I can uh, digress for a moment, you know, the Mepharshim, I think the Ramban and the Yorachayim, they all ask the Kasha. They say that, uh, you know, you, you have in these Parshias that we're all going through right now, you have the story of the Meraglim, you have the story of uh, Korach, you have the story of the Misoinanim and the Misoinanim and all kinds of terrible stories that took place um, in, in the last year there at the, in the desert. All these stories, Pinchas, this week's Parsha, you know, Partsuama, you know, <laughs> had to stop a Magefa assimilation. Like one thing after the other. In Mitnirinan, right in the middle over there, Zois Chukas Hatayra is the Paraduma. I mean, do we need to know right now, like in the middle of all these stories, do we need to know Hilchas Tumas Meis? I mean, is that complicated stuff that wasn't even Nogea? Why does this come in the middle of all the Peronius? I believe I saw in the Archaim, I'm not 100% sure. If he didn't say it, I will. That the, the, the shot in the, in the um, Parshas Chukas is the Paraduma. The Paraduma, that enigmatic um, halacha, chok, of the red heifer, the enigma of it is that. As we all know, the, the Paraduma has a koach to be matame to hirem, and it also has a koach to be matayer to meim, to masmeis. Meaning, what we see with the Paraduma, lanias daiti, I'm not trying to darshan which Lama Melo couldn't darshan, but I'm just saying positive shot. What we see is davar v'hifuchai. We see that the same thing that can be matame is the thing that could be matayer. Lamedcha, that all these stories, the story of Karach, the story of the Meraglin, is all, as much as they're um, tragic stories, they're also paraduma, which can be will be all turned around. You know, you know what's going to happen on Tisha B'av? Tisha B'av was the day of the Meraglin. Tisha B'av was the day that we did not appreciate Eretz Yisrael and we didn't appreciate the Beis Hamikdash. Like Chazal say, what's going to happen on Tisha B'Av when Mashiach comes? We're going to all appreciate Eretz Yisrael. We're going to all appreciate Yerushalayim. We're going to all build a Beis HaMikdash. There's going to be a mass of Aliyah, Kibbutz Goliath, which Bezir Hashem we're already seeing in our times. Things will be open. The, the lack of appreciation will turn to appreciation. The, 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 the broken walls will turn into the biggest bracha. That'll be our, our tunnel out. Our tunnel to get the or hatera that we all have out to the world, because there's no geula unless the whole world is involved. Prozay's teish of Yerushalayim. You know, we talked at the beginning about the fact that it's a yom shavira, which is the mukubalim call it the yom shavira, shavira saluchay, shavira sachaymais. They even call the butel atamid the yom shavira. Shavira, okay. everybody say aloud. What does the word Shavira mean? To 
break. <laughs> so interesting thing. Um, you know, in modern Hebrew, more modern Hebrew, we have a word, mashber, like a, sort of a depression, a melancholy uh, crisis that a person's going through, a tragedy. I'm going through a mashber. Interesting that in the Lashon Agimara, which comes from the Lashon of the Torah, a mashber is the, is the delivery room where babies are born. Isha Yosheves al hamashber. A woman sits on the mashber. Why? <laughs> the, the word, the, the root of the word is shever. Shever means to break. But you know, there's another shever where Yosef, who hamashbir, be'eretz Mitzrayim. Like the mashbir. Didn't hear, I'm sorry. Mashbir l'cholchai. Mashbir l'cholchai. Shever means, so here's an interesting thing. Yosef went through a mashbear and he became the mashbeer. You can, you'll never forget this word. It's so, it's so uh, poetic. He went through. Everybody came from all over the world to be mashbeer. So how does it, how does it work out that a shever is a break? And a shever is an abundance, a tikkun, and more than that, the mashber means leida chadasha. Isha yosheves al hamashber is leida chadasha. How could it be that the same word means the two things? Shviras haluchos, shviras hachoymos. And the answer is paraduma. Because in Metzias is that although the shviras haluchos, let's say, was hugely painful, Everybody was full of remorse that we lost this relic. We lost this thing that would have been the holiest thing ever to be in existence. But if not for that, Judaism would not look like it looks like today. And I think it looks good today, if I may say something controversial. I think we have a whole Talmud Bavli, Mishnah, Gemara, Rishonim, Machrenim. We have everything today. We've come, we've come into every single Hakira in terms of Havanas HaTorah. You know why we have such Havanas HaTorah? The Omic of the Torah? And we're not a bunch of, you know, just um, people walking with a light? Because of the Shvir HaLuchas. In the words of the Gemara, Shvir HaLuchas, we're Gerem Shikhas HaTorah. I think the Barditchever says that Shvir HaTorah was Gerem Shvir HaLuchas was Gerem Shikhas Hatayra, how terrible it would be if there was no Shikhas Hatayra. <laughs> if there was no Shikhas Hatayra, nobody would have written anything down. Rabbi Yudan Nasi wouldn't have written the Mishnah. If there would be no Shikhas Hatayra, we wouldn't have to do Chazar of the Dafa Yomi, Odapam, Vodapam. If there wasn't Shikhas Hatayra, we would just walk around knowing everything. You know what it would be? It would be like a child before he's born who knows Kola Tayra Kula. Bartichira said, I can't even imagine such a terrible existence. <laughs> Okay, maybe you got to be a Hasidic Rebbe to say that. Well, we could say it over. That the Shvir's Haluchais, as negative as it was, and it was negative, the positive part was that it was the beginning, it was the beginning of the time of Teshuva. It was the beginning of Moshe Rabbeinu going back up to Har Sinai. And it was the beginning of Yom Kippur. Where Hashem said, Salach tikid varecha. And it was the beginning of Yiddishkeit, the way I assume HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted it to be. In, in Kabbalistic language, we took a, a paradigm shift from Isarusa de la Eila to Isarusa de la Sato. Isarusa de la Eila is HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives us a gift. That's what he's giving us. Isarusa de la Sato is what we're doing. And everybody knows that Isarusa de la Sata is Malchus, and Malchus is Mashiach. Heinze Melech Mashiach, Malchus. Ki Malchus Shelchahi, Malchus is Isarusa de la Sata. So the Omek Hadover of the Shvir Saluchais is the Shvir Saluchais is Mashiach. Shvir Saluchais is Geula. Hufka Ayir, Prozis Teshev Yerushalayim. Your shalim is an open space. 
Fortsu Chaimais Migdalai, what are we dancing? You know, the whole thing was Mahosur Yeshua see. No, by the way, nobody knows who wrote these words and nobody knows who wrote the Nigan, as far as I know. I don't think anybody knows, but everybody, every Jew sings it. Um, but when it comes to Yevonim Nikbutsu Alai, for some reason, maybe because it's Hanukkah, we get all excited, you know, Yevonim Nikbutsu. There's new Nigunim, we're dancing and dancing with the kids, like Yevonim Nikbutsu Alai. Oh, hey, the Greeks came in, they broke the walls, exciting. Where, where's the Geula? And the answer is, Hein hein na Geula. The Fartsu Chaimais Migdalai, the intention was to bring the outside in, but the emesses, it was a paraduma because they were metame tahirim. When they came in, the malchus chashmanoim were not all good guys. They were for sure metame tahirim. Do you know the, Jew, the, the Greeks that came in were called Yavanim. The Jews that went along with it were called misyavnim. Here's a little bit of a, a, a historical piece of trivia for you. That there were more misyavnim than there were non misyavnim amongst the Jewish people. In, it does, uh, today also. There, there was more misyavnim. That was the popular way. Nobody was beating up the Greeks. <laughs> people were marrying the Greeks. It, it, was, it, was, it, was a, um, it was a time of assimilation. But can we go so far as to Darshan that assimilation is bad, but God has a plan for everything. And that is that if we could take it and make the Tahara go out, then we have the other end of the Paraduma. And the, and, and not just being Matame Tahirim, but all of a sudden we have a voice. Do we not have a voice today? Does the, does the does state of Israel not have a voice? Of course we have a voice. And, and what should be and what could be and what sometimes actually is, it's a voice of morality. It's a voice of conscience. It's a, it's a, it's a voice of good. And that's the, those are the things we need to embrace. At least when we speak in public, we speak nicely. <laughs> try, to, try to bring it out. This is the Dover v. Fucha. It's really, um, there's so much more to say, but I'm, I'm, I'm just nearing the end. I want to tell you, it just comes into my mind right now, a, uh, a story that um, just a few of you on the screen here are old enough to um, remember. But I was, um, when I was a kid, I think I was in sixth grade. I'm not 100% sure. I think it was a grade six. I went to Kadima School of Buffalo, which was a community school. Uh, community school theoretically meant that, you know, was for Orthodox, Conservative, and Reform, Jews, and whoever else. And in fact, in those days, talking about the, the you know, the 60s, um, Orthodox, Conservative, and Reform all somehow wanted to come to this day school, not too many. Um, in my grade six, there were nine kids, of which, by the way, I think, I think I'm, this is right, I'm the only one that married a Jew. We're talking about, you know, serious stuff here. Those are my friends, Ricky and Jackie and Johnny, you know, Liz and Leslie, you know, all married going, as far as I know. Um, I didn't attend the wedding, weddings. Uh, but um, I remember this. I remember that the Six-Day War, what we called afterwards the Six-Day War, nobody knew if it was going to be a Six-Day War or a Six-Day War or a Six-Year War. Or, God forbid, the annihilation of the State of Israel. Nobody knew. Today we're smart. Today we talk about it, miracles, but at the time. So there was an assembly in school. I remember this. I, somehow this is like, you know, how I remember, and you remember some of you, the day that John F. Kennedy got shot. Like, I, I, I remember this assembly. I remember the Six-Day War burst out, and there was an assembly. And the principal of the school was a woman by the name of, they called her, Harabanit Klein. Her, her husband was Rabbi Isaac Klein, who was the graduate of Slabotka, <laughs> the conservative rabbi of Buffalo, Rabbi Isaac Klein. He actually wrote the, um, he walked with a hat and a frock, by the way. Uh, he, he looked something like me. And he, he wrote the Shulchan Aruch for the conservative movement. Um, you know, he also built the mikvah in Buffalo. Uh, I'm not promoting conservative Jewry, I'm just telling you. Uh, and he started the school. 
and his wife was the principal. And his wife, Henrietta Klein, Allah Shalom, conservative Rabbitson. And the reason they built the mikveh is so that she can go to the mikveh. There was no mikveh in Buffalo. It was in the old neighborhood where everyone was afraid to go. I, I can remember that all the kids in the school, maybe 50, were together, and she said something like the following. And she said it with tears. We built so we worked so hard to build the, the state of Israel. This was 1967. She was actually, you know, in the Haganah. You know, we we worked so hard to build the state of Israel. We worked so hard to bring Jews to Israel. The whole purpose of this school, she said, is to teach kids Hebrew, that they can go to Israel. And we thought, Baruch Hashem, we're in Israel. But now, she told us kids, now we are being threatened and we don't know if there's going to be a state of Israel. We don't know if Israel will survive and we don't necessarily know except for God's promise that the Jewish people will survive. And she was crying when she said it. And we all said a Tehillim and we all sang Hatikva. <laughs> That's the assembly that I remember. So if every once in a while these little, um, you know, Zionist pieces come out of me in my drush, this, this, that's the source. <laughs> that's where it comes from. Later I went to Brisk, they knocked most of it out of me. <laughs> I kind of got rid of those. I was already going to demonstrations against the state of Israel. But that's where it comes from. That's my, my uh, Shorish, my Makar. And um, I, I have no regret. I have only Hakar Sato for what they taught me there. But um, here's the thing the most well-intentioned, you know, mikvah-going, rabbinit, conservative. Like, she was wrong. She was right, but she was wrong. She was right that this could have been the Yom HaShavira of the Jewish people. Nobody knew that miracles. Ain't Saim Chanal Who knows if all the miracles of the Six-Day War, and I remember all of a sudden the front page of the, of the, I remember my father showing me, front page of the Buffalo News, Buffalo Evening News, was... Israel, 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 Eyewitness News, Channel 7, Israel, Israel, another miracle, another miracle, another miracle. Boom, we won the war in six days. We got so used to this kind of thing that uh, by the time it came to the Yom Kippur War, it was like everyone's looking at their watch. It was taking so long, you know, <laughs> six days should be three days now, you know. Uh, okay, it wasn't so posh. But that, was, that just shows you what, what, it, what a miracle it was, and it was the miracle of the, of the survival of Jewish people. I'm not, today's Shiva Sabra Thomas is not Yom Yerushalayim. But I, I just want to point out that it was the day that we thought, and, and we daven correctly, that there should not be a Shavira. It was the same week that Jerusalem was re reunited. It was the same week where Aliyah started. Now, this was, by the way, I just want to make this point. This was in the middle of the riots of 1967 and 1968, which I remember. It was, the, it was in the middle of protests of Martin Luther King and all those who joined him um, throughout the United States of America. It was the middle of, um, you know, uh, you know, all of the, yeah, I mean, just Google the 60s, my gosh. You know, you know what they say is um, if you, if you uh, remember the 60s, it means you weren't really there. So, you know, but, but just, just, I mean, you know, just look at the, the height of the hippie movement. Um, the Beatles, <laughs> all of a sudden, you know, the yogis became, you know, the spiritual teachers. All that was going on in the 60s and came 1967, the Six Day War. So you know what happened with the Six Day War? I want to tell you something. It was the first day of the Balchuva movement that we know today. Uh, so many people right here are close to Tiger today because of the Six Day War, whether directly or indirectly. Yeshiva started in Yerushalayim. People came to Yerushalayim to learn. It, 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 Chabad houses sprouted all over the country, all over the world. Lubavitcher Rebbe said, wow, you know, there's what to do here. Six-day war, six-day war, six-day war. The Yoim Shavira was, was, was a Yoim Shavira. It was Hu HaMashber, Hu HaMashbir. The walls of Yerushalayim, when they came down, and with this I'm going to end, the walls of Yerushalayim, when they came down, Boy, did we say Tehillim. But the walls of Yerushalayim is Prozai's Teshav Yerushalayim. And I believe, by the way, that this is so important for like what we're all going through today. Um, the world is going through today. 
you know, I, 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 it, it saddens me so that, you know, I, I mean, you know, people are sick, people are infected, the number's going up and, you know, but amongst all those things, I can't, you know, you know, who knows, but what saddens me the most is the whole building of Yiddishkeit was just put on hold on March 16th. Hold button. Uh, the hold button is, sorry yeshivas, you can't be learning. Sorry shuls, be thankful we let you have 20 people in the building. I'm not complaining, they're doing what they have to do, I presume. I mean, I presume they're trying to help the people, not hurt the people. Uh, the, the, every, everything, every youth group, every, every, even publishing, I'm in the publishing business on the side. You know what it is to get a book printed and shipped out now? All of the building of Torah has been put on hold. And I feel personally, and I'm, I'm here to express this to you, it's like you're in an elevator and it's going from the 10th floor to the 11th floor and it's stopped in the middle. There's panic. It's dark. Who knows what the heck is going outside? It's 10 o'clock. You're, you're ringing the bell and we're stuck. But I think what we need to know on Shivas or Batamuz is that Yosef went through the Mashper and Yosef was the Mashpir. It was a Yom Leda for the Jewish people coming to Mitzrayim. It was, it was the, the, the Greeks bursting through the walls was a new day. It was a new dawn. Morning has broken. It's just took, taken another 2,000 years until today. I don't know what's going on now. I, we, nobody knows what the meaning of it is until Achar Amaisa, just like we didn't know what the meaning of the Six-Day War was, which was, by the way, I believe the last time here in Israel they closed every yeshiva and every, and every, and every uh, shul. I believe so. You know, nobody knows the meaning of it. Nobody knows the miracles to come and nobody knows the gula comes. But I just wanted to bring everybody together to, to understand Shiva Sirbatamuz and to understand that it's a Yom Tefillah. More than anything else, as the Rambam says, quoted in the Mishnah Bura, it's a Yom Shuva and a Yom Tefillah. And a Tefillah can take, um, you can go to Shul and Davin all day. You can fast if you're up to it. Um, but it's a day that even take one minute and just Davin that the Shavira should be a Shvira and the Shever should be a Mashbir and the Shvira's Haluchais is the Binyan of the Luchais. And, and you know, the, even the even the Luchais Shniais are um, Noiseis Noisav, you know, they, they, they were miraculous because it was all mixed into one thing. It didn't, it didn't weigh anything. And those, those that stayed with us for Klai Yisrael, and uh, thank you every, for everybody for coming. We should be Zoycha to the, um, exactly what the Navi said. Exactly what the Navi said. Let's get that Pusik again. Koyamar Hashem Svakais, Tsoim Haravi, Vitsoim Hamishi, Vitsoim Hashavi, Vitsoim Hasiri, Yelabes Yehuda, Lusasa, Ino Lusimcha, Ula Mayadim Toivim, Via Emes Vasholem, Ehavu, Kenyahi Rotsain. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Amen, Amen, Skoya. Skoya, Rabbi. Thank you very much.